Hello, my name is David Waltzman and I am a Simulation Product Specialist for Go Engineer. Today we're going to be talking about product testing for electronics. There are two main areas of environmental testing in the electronics applications, mechanical space and the thermal. Both are very important. Mechanical has to do more with loads that we traditionally think of like forces and accelerations and torques. Thermal considers temperature mappings, heat fluxes, are the components going to fry? All right, so both very important, but the focus of what we're going to discuss today is on the mechanical side. We'll be addressing these three different products here. We have an iPhone, a remote control, and a perforated plate electronics enclosure. And we'll be investigating how in SolidWorks we complete a drop test, an impact test, and an acceleration test, respectively. Let's start off with the drop test. The setup is actually quite elegant. We choose a drop height or a velocity. Then since we're choosing a height, we say how far off the ground it's dropping and the orientation of the ground. In SolidWorks, the product is falling in a vacuum. This is significant because there isn't any air resistance to turn the product as it falls. Well, so that may seem initially limiting, but we can get around that simply by cloning these studies and choosing different orientations for which to create the impacts, and then study which one has the most harmful effects on the product design. From there, we choose if once it hits the target, is there any sliding? So we can define a friction coefficient for that. We can also specify if the target is rigid. For the most part, this is the option that we choose. You do have the capability to specify in how stiff the target is that it's hitting. In the real world, when there's a collision, there's damping in the system, meaning that if you drop a ball on the ground, it won't come back to the original height. So we can specify this in SolidWorks, and best to investigate this by doing empirical tests and coming up with the appropriate value for your simulation. From there, we set the options for what we want to record in our simulation. The drop test is an explicit dynamic analysis meaning that we're actually looking at physical time steps after impact. Here we're looking at 50 microseconds and saving out a variety of plots along the way. We get excellent outputs like stress, displacement, and strain, and we can see how the orientation that we drop it in affects those results. What's excellent is that we're able to save out our results into animations. So here we're able to see our phone falling, hitting the ground, and how the stress spreads across it. The next scenario we want to look at is an impact test with the sphere hitting the remote. This type of analysis will be conducted in a nonlinear dynamic study because the shape of our system is going to be changing in time. So since we have items moving, we need to establish a reference that's stationary. So our remote is fixed at both ends and the ball will be coming in at a specified velocity to it. The result you see is the ball gets closer and then makes impact. The stress starts spreading throughout the product. And we can look at if we need to add more contours to surfaces, if it's ideal to be flat, or if we can get away with more buttons and a weaker structure. As before, we have great animations that we're able to export from this step. So here you see at the impact, the stress starts spreading throughout the case. The last one we're going to be looking at is an acceleration test. So it's this electronics box. We're going to hit it with two Gs of acceleration over a tenth of a second in the X direction. And so this will be a, a quick shake. This is contrasting to a static study where we choose the direction of gravity or an acceleration like this two Gs but in that scenario, it's applied slowly, so as to be at a steady state equilibrium condition. In this scenario, we're seeing the time effects in a linear dynamic study. Here are some contour plots from that shock, so we can see how the different parts of our design are strong or weak, conversely, in the orientation of our acceleration. Let's check out another animation. So quickly, we see that shock. And then we see some residual movement, some stresses that occur afterwards 
as it's resuming normalcy. Let's look at that one more time. There's the big shock, and now it's settling down until it's at a steady state. So what tools did we leverage today to complete all these analyses? We started off with the drop test in SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional. We then moved on to a nonlinear dynamic study and a modal time history analysis inside of our SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium. This is David Waltzman from Go Engineer. Thank you for tuning in.